Well, hello again, everybody. So I tried sea foam in cylinder four, and I let it soak overnight. I let it soak for about 24 hours because I put it in about 9 a.m. yesterday morning. And I actually rotated, I took the, the uh, side cover off and rotated a crank up and down every four hours just to see if I can break, if it was a ring, you know, sticking issue. Um, I kind of rotated it back and forth to see with the sea foam in there if it would break any of the rings. If there was, if this, if it was a sticking ring, I have a suspicion this is either a burnt valve or it is a head gasket. Um, one of those two. And I wouldn't know until I pulled this head off. Now this head versus the head nearest to the firewall, as you can see, is much easier to take off and work on. I may do that, but my wife needs a car. So now we're going, we're the kind of people that keep, as you can tell by this, with 390,000 miles on it. We bought it at 125,000 miles in 2008. So we're the kind of people that buy a car, keep it. I do my own service, so I have a little bit of a leg up there. And I, I do my own minor and major work. I mean, you could tell I'm, no, uh, I'm not shy because you can't own cars like that. That's a 99 to, uh, 911, and that's a 928, a 79928. And I got a 2004 BMW uh, 325 Ci. All manuals, by the way, because I'm a manual guy. My wife uh, can't drive a manual, so her cars have to be automatic. But that's great for her because uh, it's predominantly automatic world now. But anyways, so I'm I'm pushing her to look at the generation before the current generation RAV4, uh, like a 2016 through a 2018. I, I think that style looks closest to the Lexus style. You know, she came from a 2002 Pontiac Sunfire when we first got married in 2002, around about there, 2001, 2002. I can't remember. Uh, um. And in 2008, she got this, so she ma did a major upgrade, even though this had, you know, 125, like I said before my previous video, this was mint. And, you know, Illinois weather and takes it, and she's a runaround uh, person. She does a lot of driving, so you could tell from 2008, where it had 125,000 on the clock, she, from 2008 to, to now, June of 2023, she put on, God, how many miles is that, 250 plus thousand, uh, 253? Uh, 270 about 270,000 miles she put on from you know 2008 on a used car so she got her money's worth because we only paid 8,500 for this back then because prices weren't too crazy like they are now but we've been car, car shopping and it's a nightmare you can't you can't get the RAV4 or the CRV that you want uh, regardless of how much money you have in cash or or financing if your credit's like over 800 uh, you know you can get the best rates uh, you can't even get the the car you want now. I'm I'm the mechanic of the family, so I have a vested interest in pushing her into a Rav Four because the Rav Four has a six speed automatic traditional uh, transmission and it has no turbo. It has just a standard four cylinder engine, which I like because it's easier to work on instead of this V six that I've been dealing with for you know 15 years trying to get the back plugs and stuff. It's not been pleasant. You know, I've actually had this whole air intake off. I I had to do um, knock sensors, which you have to take the plenum off and everything to get to the bottom knock sensor on the 3.0 V6. What is this? The 1ZM? Oh, I can't. I can never remember the 1ZM FE or something like that. V6 3.0. It's a solid engine, but uh, we just you know got caught. Like I said, I may actually fix this. But getting back to um, uh, get, getting uh, to to um, to talk about looking for her car. So it's been kind of very, you know, disgusting. I'm, I, I hate car shopping. We both hate car shopping, shopping first. We went to Honda of Joliet yesterday, and they're the first one that are actually doing a uh, markup over MSR, MSRP. If they have an e, uh, like a CRV in stock, a brand new one, and they have one in the dealership that I can see, the guy told me that they're marking it up like two grand over MSRP. So maybe they feel like they're, they're not gouging as much, but they're still gouging on bad times where people can't get cars. And I just, I won't give them an ounce of my business ever again. And I've dealt with that place for a long time because I've also owned uh, Hondas and Acuras in the past. I bought parts from them. They don't care about me, about, about that stuff. They want to sell cars. But I, Honda Joliet, I'm sorry, their, their markup over MSRP, they're gouging people in these bad economic times of trying trying to get cars. 
nah, I'm just not in for it. I know, I know it's supply versus demand and they're allowed to do it. I guess Honda, I asked the salesman, I said, Honda allows that? And they said, yeah, Honda doesn't care. So, uh, but the Toyota dealerships I've been at, they're not doing that. And I get, get the feeling that Toyota won't let them mark up over MSRP. But the two Toyota dealerships I've been at for the ones we've been looking at, they only have Honda certified. So you're looking at, you know, 40,000 mile RAV4s, like 2022s with 45,000 miles on it for near what a brand new one costs. So maybe that's a little bit kind of the same uh, direction as a, as a markup. I don't know, but it just, it just, you know, people like during the pandemic, when they capitalize on bad times, it just, it just, you just remember that when times get good again and, you know, they're trying, they they have huge inventory and they can't move it. So uh, you actually will shy away from them to give them any more of your business. And that's what I'll do with that store. But anyways, so getting back to this, I'm the mechanic of the family. I do my own service on the cars and most of the major repairs. I won't do a transmission rebuild um, that I'll actually, you know, farm out to the transmission people. Uh, I've taken one automatic apart and did it successfully years ago, but I won't do it again. It's just a lot of detailed work. Better left up to the experts. Some things you just got to give it up and farm it out. The jobs farm out. But everything else pretty much I've done. Timing belts and everything. Water pumps. So I'm not shy of working on new cars. Um, and uh, you can see I'm a glutton for punishment because I own three German cars, which, you know, just sitting, they need work. So any anywho, I'm, I have a vested interest in push, pushing my wife towards the previous generation RAV4, the 2013 to 2018. That one to me reminds me of a baby RX 300. Um, it's got a traditional, you know, it's got a traditional uh, fuel injected four cylinder that seems to be not be plagued with the oil ring burning issue. And it's got a uh, traditional six speed. Now, she likes the CRV, like the 2017 and up to 2022 CRV, much better, I can tell. You know, I can almost see the gleam in her eye when she gets in one and drives it. But Honda switched course back, uh, I think, on that generation in 2017 when they redesigned it. They went CVT and they went turbo, a smaller displacement 1.5 turbo. Now, they had some issues early on with the fuel passing past the rings. Uh, and they, changed, they were able to semi-resolve that problem by changing the logic and the software uh, at certain uh, RPMs to like idle versus certain R other RPMs through the range to to not put as much fuel into the uh, oiling system, which, you know, diluted the motor oil and would increase wear on your car. So, you know, shop, that's one reason why shop one of those used, and I'm finding them all over. We're, we're trying to find one under like $24,000, which is not too hard. You can get an EX or an EXL uh, up to like maybe 100,000 miles. Uh, you're seeing them for 60,000 miles and stuff like that, which is, you know, low for us because we, we're used to high mileage cars. But my concern is for people who keep cars 15 years plus, 10 to 15 years, and rack up, you know, maybe 15 to 20,000 miles a year. Uh, you know, we were looking at a higher mileage RAV4 Limited because the Limited has everything too, and it's about the same price as the lower trims. But this one has 192,000 miles on it, the one we were looking at. But it's a Toyota, and it's a, it's a non-turbo, so you don't have the turbo to wear out. It doesn't have the pressures of the turbo, like the 1.5 does with the Honda. And it doesn't have a CVT. It has a traditional bulletproof six-speed automatic, which if you change in fluid and maintain it, it should last you a long time. 192 is a little skittish, but it's in the color she likes. Uh, so... That one, and it's in really great shape. Uh, apparently, the story was the guy was just, he traveled all highway miles on, uh, you know, state to state. Uh, he was some worked for some pharmaceutical company. So, and it was serviced at that Toyota dealership. So, they're actually selling it at the dealership. So, the fact that it didn't go to auction, that's usually cars that fit, meet their, meet below their criteria on these big dealerships like Honda and Toyota, of like of Naperville, or any of these other places, Orland Park. Uh, anywhere you go, if it doesn't meet their criteria, they don't want it. They'll send it to auction. But if it's a good car, they'll sell it. And a lot of them are offering like a five day return policy. No questions asked, full return to just give you, because the salesmen are telling me that people are, uh, making irrational decisions right now based on, you know, necessity and, and, you know, just the need to have a car to go to work, but they're giving you at least five days now because of that, you know, post pandemic to return. I think that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty sweet. You can't go over 250 miles. You made that stipulation, 
But if you stay under 250 miles from the time you take the car, you have five days. Um, I think it's a straight, straight five days to call back and say, I don't like it. I want to return it. And it's even in, it states in the contract, he showed me that you can bring it back. One, 100% of your money will be refunded. I guess they hold the title and stuff like that before sending it down. So it's easy for them to do it. They just pull everything back. So, you know, that's, that's something new. Cause usually when you bought up before the pandemic, when cars were available, usually when you bought it, the day you walked out with a used car, you're pretty much stuck with it. I think there's some laws, but most of, for the most part, you were stuck with it. So that's that's the dilemma. She likes the RAV4, the 2017 redesign to 2022. Not like in the current 2023 that much, and you can't even find one. And the only one we found was at Honda of Joliet again. And they're marking it up like, two, like 2,500, I think, was the markup, if I thought I heard them correctly. So that's just a kickback to them just for having one on their lot available for you to buy don't like that. Won't. Uh, I know it's uh, supply and demand again, but I won't give them my business just because of that BS. So that's the that's the question. And what would you do? Would you buy a higher mileage RAV4 with a fuel injected traditional standard four cylinder with a traditional six speed automatic, or would you do a you know a 2018 CRV? with like 65, 70,000 miles. I still think when you start pushing those, both of those cars past 200,000 miles, you're gonna, I, my guess is this, the RAV4 is gonna hold up longer and give less problems because of its simplicity of old school, you know, old school transmission. What are your thoughts? Let me know. Thanks.